Hi everybody. Today is January 12th, 2023 and um, it's the evening time and I'm not even going to say what time it is. <laughs> if you've been watching, you know. Anyhow, um, today is the, or tonight is the beginning of day eight of the five floor Uracell and I wanted to kind of give you a look at my skin. So what was different today? Um, so last night I put on my application and just, as I said, felt windburned or chapped. So before I went to bed last night, I did go ahead and put on a light coat of the Aquaphor. And um, that, was, that was okay. You know, it doesn't dry down kind of like a moisturizer would. Um, you still have a little um, tackiness to yourself. Um, and I did not put that much on, but it did give me some, um, relief from the dryness. And, um, when I woke up this morning, I thought for sure, for sure, um, I would have some sort of noticeable eruptions on my face and woke up and ran to the mirror and not so much. So, um, the only thing that I can tell you that is different is I definitely have a lot more redness, um, but nothing, again, I just feel windburned. That's it. Just windburned. Um, when I, when I look closely at my skin, I can see a little bit of maybe little, look like little red, little tiny red bumps if, if, if at all, but really not a bunch. Um, the biggest thing is I'm starting to get a little bit of swelling right here, just kind of in my eyes, like right, right in here. And I think that might be because I am putting, um, the cream, uh, on my eyebrows. And there's a little story that goes with that. And maybe I'll, you know, tell you guys, um, you know, as we get closer to, um, day 14, some of my experiences in dermatology over my last probably easily 40 years. And um, all I'm going to say is, if you're thinking something isn't right, don't you let tell anybody tell you it's not. That, that for whatever reason, you don't have an issue. If you're thinking it's not right, it's probably not right. And um, you go find somebody else. And I know it costs money and I know it costs time. And I know that um, it's a real pain to have to fill out new patient paperwork every time, but you don't want to end up having to have most surgery because you were told it's nothing. And, um, so I will go through that story later on, but, um, anyhow, that being said, so I'm going to give you a little close up of my skin and then I was going to read you, um, something from my doctor's paperwork to, so if, if, if you're someone like me who, is not understanding why my face isn't blowing up the way I've seen other people on YouTube's faces blowing up. Um, maybe it'll make a little more sense, but I'm, I'm certainly patiently waiting. So, um, I'm just going to give you a quick look. So here's that pink dot right there that literally came up the very first day I used the cream still there. You can see kind of right in here. And I've always attributed this, to um, my sunglasses, to reflections from my sunglasses, creating some of these kind of weird little bumps and things right here that have been frozen off a million times. Um, and again, moving into the eyebrow area. And then you can see on my forehead that it's red. And I don't know if my cell phone camera will catch all of it, but here we are again with the eyebrows. And of course that, that is concerning, but I was a kid growing up in California and summers were in plastic pools, sprinklers, um, what are those things called? Slip and slides, wiggle, the wiggle thing. I mean, all day, every day out in the sun, out in the water, um, when I was older at the beach and I'll tell you in a later one, a story when my husband and I were dating that honestly, I feel 
has come back to haunt me a thousand times. <laughs> but in the meantime, um, this is just a pretty good indication of what my day eight looks like using the fly fleury uracil twice a day. Um, two things I forgot to, or I wanted to mention from another video. Um, I was talking about the uh, CeraVe Hydrating Facial Cleanser as a mild cleanser that you can use uh, during your treatment. And I actually really like it. A lot of people really like Cetaphil. That's not a brand that I particularly have had great luck with, um, but I do like the CeraVe products, so I thought I would show you what that looks like. Um, and I know CeraVe products are a little hard to find here and there, and again, I don't want you to feel weird if you do end up having to order something off of eBay or Amazon. Um, I think for the most part, the sellers are pretty legit, and you're not going to have any problems. Um, I've always had good luck when I've had to find products, no matter what they are. So um, I want to encourage you to, you know, have, have life be convenient for you. Pay a few extra dollars if you need to on shipping and just get the stuff. Make your life easy. Um, but one of the things that I forgot to mention that was in my paperwork that um, you should have on hand in case you have some pretty decent eruptions and you start kind of weeping or oozing. Um, which can happen, and, and again, I'm sure you've seen that in other YouTube videos, but um, you want to have bacitracin um, on hand so that um, you can put that on your uh, weepy oozy spots, and then you can put a coat of aquaphor over the top of that, but you want to have something that gives you a little bit more um, protection from just maybe getting an infection. And of course, if you're really weeping and oozing, you want to contact your doctor. But I did want to read you one thing that was in my paperwork, and I don't know how all the doctors um, talk about using these types of creams and what your expectations should be. And, you know, I mean, they'll tell you you're going to definitely feel it, you know, and they'll give you a brief rundown, but I thought this was pretty good. Um... It is normal that most people using these medications will experience redness and irritation of the skin in the areas treated, um, and it may look like poison ivy. This is an indication that the medication is effective. So I am having redness. I wouldn't say I'm necessarily looking like I've been in poison ivy yet, but it means that even though I'm not having eruptions, it's working. Uh, this is an indication that the medication is effective. In general, the worse the irritation, the better the results. So that's kind of what I had been waiting for is, and, and not, ex, not being excited about it for sure, but that's what I'd been waiting for. For some people, the redness, scale, itch, and irritation will begin after only two to three days. And for other people, it may take two weeks or longer. Please do not stop your medication thinking it is not working for you. Um, so that being said, since mine, mine seems like it's a little bit slower in process in comparison to what I've seen others go through, um, I'm definitely going to be patient and I'm going to continue to use the product exactly as, as it was prescribed. And um, by day 13, depending on how I'm looking, um, I may give my doctor a call and see if they want me to continue to go out uh, to day 21. Um, not because I like to, you know, feel icky, but I've had enough freezing. I've had enough scares. I've had AMO surgery. I have had a malignant melanoma. 35 years ago on my back. I've had a squamous cell on my leg. Um, I'm sick of skin cancer. I really am. And I know that for a lot of people, especially in my age, I'm 62, that, um, you know, a lot of this was from the 1960s, 1970s, even early 80s, um, when we were out tanning, putting, I can't even believe that every time I say this, and when I speak to people my age, we all say the same thing, baby oil with iodine. Um, I had friends that had sun lamps 
tanning booths. Oh my God, in the late 70s, early 80s, tanning booths were huge. I never really was a tanning booth person because I grew up in the sun. Um, but, you know, skin protection was, was really just not there. It really wasn't. And what we did have, you know, especially, I can't even remember a guy that I ever knew that didn't use tanning oil. And I mean, I used, I used to know people that used butter on their skin. So, I mean, we were, we were cooking ourselves like we were pieces of bacon in a frying pan. I mean, just absolutely terrible. And, um, you know, I tan up pretty nicely. I don't get dark and golden brown, but I get a nice glow, you know, glowy, tanny brown. And I haven't done it for years, but the fact of the matter is, is that for years and years and years and years and years and years, I did it. I mean, I can remember as a kid, five, six, seven years old, um, having that beautiful golden skin color, you know, the, the, the pink little cheeks, you know, um, that you get after a, a nice day in the sun or at the pool. Um, and high school, uh, oh my God, it just, it makes me so sad to think about it now because there's so much available to people, um, to protect themselves now. And I, I, I just wish I could shake every single person and say, you know what, get your tan from a foundation, get your tan from, you know, a, I'm even hesitant, I'm even hesitant to say a spray tan or tan in a bottle because who knows what those chemicals are and how they affect you and what your ultimate result will be with those. But I think, I think really in reality, you know, if, if you can stay out of the sun and be happy with your beautiful skin that you were given at birth, save yourself all of this, truly save yourself all of this. Um, at least your kids, your teenagers or whoever you can shake. Um, yeah, oh, it just, it, it does. It makes me so sad. This makes me so sad. Um, because to be honest with you, there was no reason this had to happen to me. Um, and anyhow, um, if you're watching this, you've been just like me. And so you know what I'm talking about. And I suppose someone that isn't having a skin cancer issue probably isn't watching this. And so my message will probably just be something you're shaking your head and acknowledging and saying, Oh my God, I know it. I lived it. I wish I hadn't. Um, but all we can do is try and impart our experiences and our knowledge and, um, hope that maybe we can have some effect on some other person because this is just terrible. I mean, it really is just terrible and it really is life altering and, you know, just planning how you're going to spend your day and how you're going to spend the, you know, the hottest parts of the day. And, you know, my God, I got to wear a hat or, you know, I'm the only one in, in, you know, walking around an art fair with an umbrella. It's just, it's terrible. So anyhow, um, but I'm, I'm hoping that the Fifluorouracil does have some protect, you know, some gives me some, I guess, added, I don't know what the word would be, added comfort that maybe we got to kill off something that is just waiting to show it, you know, rear its ugly head. But, um, you know, I, I would love to I would love to be able to say that this will be, you know, the end of my skin cancer journey. I strongly suspect it's not, but I would like it to be for anybody I, I know and anybody that, you know, is watching this. So anyhow, that being said, I have a tendency to ramble, but um, I'm happy to be here. And one of these days, um, I would love for you to see me as I would look normally when I'm out and 
you know, working in in public um, with my hair and my makeup. But for right now, this is raw. This is real. And I will see you on the next video. Thank you. And again, um, these are my first YouTube videos. So I appreciate anything that, you know, any comments you have, any questions you have. If you would like to subscribe, if you have anybody you would like to share this with, um, maybe you have a teenager that's, you know, just giving you hell about, you know, covering up or wearing sunblock or whatever, um, please share the video. Um, you know, because I was that, I, I was, I was young and stupid and I am paying for it immensely. So anyhow, have a really good night.